that's right. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass, and we are talking with Marcia Kelly. She, Marcia Kelly Clark, who is uh, works in the coroner's office right now and wants to be the coroner. Is that right, Marcia? Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, how has this campaigning thing been for you so far? Interesting. Interesting? <laughs> Different. I, I've never been involved in politics in my life, so I've learned a lot, and I'm still learning. Everybody. What would you say would be the biggest thing you've learned, then? Do share with us. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's a headache. It's a headache. <laughs> every day, every day, every day. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm learning from it, and... It's going to continue, I hope. <laughs> it's going to continue. I've got a few more months left. <laughs> That's right. Now, you are running as a as a Democrat in this office. I am. It seems kind of interesting that we have a Republican and a Democrat for that office of the coroner, doesn't it? I mean, yes. seriously. I yes. mean, you know, it doesn't seem to be a, uh, a partisan office. Well, I don't believe politics should be involved in the coroner's office. You're all correct. I, there's, there's just no need for it. And... If I'm elected, I really don't have any plans to bring politics in the office because, you know, when you go out to someone's death, you don't ask what, what political party they're with. So You're not asking yeah. for donations? <laughs> oh, I'll take anyone. <laughs> if anyone wants to donate, I'll take all these. Yeah. Oh, but as a coroner, you're not. <laughs> oh, no. Know, right. well, I would like to see some grants and things that we try to write and stuff like that. You know, but, but your heavy politics is, I just don't believe it belongs in the coroner's office. But And I'm not into it a lot. <laughs> like I said, I just started sure. this, so. Sure. Well, I guess I guess I was just wondering, um, do, can you tell me why it is a political office? Why it's an office that people vote on? To me, it would seem to be one of those offices that should be the best person for the job, should be the job. Well, since, like I said, I just started into all this politics and, and really didn't know what, what was what until I started getting into it. But it, it seems to me that all county offices should be the best person for the job and not I agree not a part, I agree. have to run on a party ticket but um why it's like that I don't know I, I've heard my boss now I've heard him say several times that it never shouldn't be involved in politics and I never really understood why until I started running for the office and now I know is that's what it is but I still don't see the need for it. Absolutely. Now, at running as a Democrat, though, you do not have an opponent opponent as a Democrat, so there will be, you will not be in the primary on June 12th. You will be the candidate that whoever wins in the runoff between the two Republican candidates um, in June. That is correct. That is correct. And I'll right. be on the November 6th. Right, right. November 6th. So, uh, gosh, they've been having all these uh, get-togethers and uh, the stumps and all this kind of stuff. How have you felt about it? I've, I've tried to attend all of them. You know, I've, I've got out and went around and had my share, and I've enjoyed them. So I'm getting some ideas for when the time comes that I can do something. So, but um, I try to get out and go to anything I can. So I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. <laughs> now you've worked in the coroner's office for how many years? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve. years. Wow. I started in 2000, and I became chief deputy coroner in 2005. Now, what does Chief Deputy Coroner mean? Well, the whole time that I've been there, I've, I've backed up the weekend guys or backed up the other deputy coroners when they needed something. And up until maybe four years ago, I did all of the office work, too. So, And then we, we were able to hire somebody to, to have the office open from 8.30 to 5 every day. And she does most of the office work now. Of course, back then, you know, it was just me. And when I became chief deputy coroner, really it's just added, it's just written out that I do what I do, I, I guess, you know, and, and um, you go on scene, um, oh, I, and, and, yes. and when somebody, I mean, because we've got the coroner and then we've got the deputy coroner, I guess I'm just trying to understand what the difference is between the two. Well, the coroner, he is, um, he runs the office and, um, he used to take calls several years ago. He hasn't in several years. And, and deputy coroners and chief deputy coroner myself, would, we go out on calls. We actually go to the death scenes and work the deaths. Um, and Corsi could too. Mr. Corsi could too. You know, he just he has enough of us to do the job sure. now. And chief deputy coroner, like I said, it was just 
there, we checked at other corner offices in the state, and everyone had a next in line, a chief deputy coroner, and and then Steve Owens, that's also with the coroner's office, he became the investigator. So we both got a name. Yeah, you got a title. <laughs> got a title. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you got a title. All right. So um, now, what exactly does the coroner do? I think there's a lot of question as to there's what they exact, exactly do. Anytime there's a death outside a medical facility, and even in a medical facility like in the, at the hospital, if it's, if it's a death under 24 hours or if it's an inpatient in the hospital that's been involved in, say, an accident or a homicide or suicide, anything other than a natural death at the hospital we actually respond to. Um, I'll bet in some of the elder care, some of the... Things. Well, the, the, the nursing homes around town, they usually have a resident doctor, so right. they, they don't call us unless it, somebody fail and it has going to be an accidental death or something like that, or, or there's something suspicious, we will go to them. Hospice of the Piedmont, we don't respond to the hospice house or to hospice deaths because they have a Dr. Todd's a regular doctor down sure. there, but they do send us the paperwork. We do keep them as a call. Uh, you know, our, our records do show that a, a hospice is. The other hospices around town, like Sierras and Hospice of South Carolina, we do respond to those. There's certain paperwork that has to be done, and DHEC has to issue that paperwork, and Hospice of the Piedmont has the paperwork, but the other hospices don't, so we have to go out to those. But anytime there's a death outside the medical facility or in a home, we respond to all, every one of them. Now, one of the things that it just seems to me is we are having more violent deaths. Oh, it, it's horrible. You know, it, it's, it's I'm a, correct then on this. It, it is a tragedy. Um, you know, these guns and, and fights, and it's just, we have seen a lot lately, and, and probably in the last, um, I would say the last two years, I, I think I've, I don't really know how many they are, I haven't really counted them, but just trying to look back on them, it seems like there, there's been an increase in the violent deaths, and, and it's just a tragedy, you know, for a mother to lose her child over, over nothing, and um, the well, car wrecks. So, well, it's been, a, I think, of course, there seems to be an increase in drug activity in yes. our area, and yes. that, of course, brings <clears throat> that right in there. Absolutely. And I would, I would expect, too, that uh, some of the, econo the economy would be affecting that. It but has to, you know, when, when people are out of work and they just, I don't know if, it, if it's depressing to them, it would be to me, and you know, it just, it just brings on a whole different attitude in a person, I believe. You know, that's my personal opinion, and, and it's, just, it's just sad. It seems like everybody ha carries a gun, and we seem to have more and more people carrying guns. We sure do, we yes. sure do. And, you know, I'm not a gun, I, I'm, I don't care for guns at all, and when I go to a scene and there is a gun, I make sure I get law enforcement in there first, you know, because that, that's their job. They know about the guns and they know how to, what to do with them and how to do them, but I don't want to move something and get shot. Sure. So, now, um, are, so you actually investigate the crime scene? No. Okay. That is up to law enforcement. Um, okay. If, it, if it's a crime scene, the law enforcement's there and they investigate the crime. The, the deceased, the body belongs to the coroner's office, not the law enforcement. And both of those agencies do two different, total, total different jobs, just as um, EMS has their job, law enforcement has their job, and the coroner's office has theirs. Um, the coroner's office, we determine h how the person died or why the person died. I presume now you do that through autopsies and um, other information along that line, so yours is really reading over reports and that type of thing? Well, it starts with, you, we, you go in and, <clears throat> excuse me, and you know, you get information from the family. It really depends on the, on the death, because sure. if it's an elderly person, or it's a person who's had previous heart attacks or something like that, that's when you would order records, medical records from a doctor. And we try our best to get <coughs> excuse me, a doctor to sign the death certificate for someone who's passed away. If, if they have a doctor that they see regular, we, we want the doctor to do it. But if not, the coroner's office does the death certificates, and that's when we will order medical records and read over them. And if there's if it was a healthy 35-year-old person, for example, and, and 
there was just absolutely no reason for them to die. Sure, we're going to have an autopsy because we, we need to know. And the autopsy is going to give us the answers. Sometimes where is the autopsies? Where are the autopsies done? We do Dr. Woodard in Anderson and um, Dr. Walsh in Newberry. We we use Anderson probably more than we do Newberry, but we go between the two. And then there's Dr. Ward. He's in Greenville, and the only time we really use Greenville is if somebody was transported to Greenville from Greenwood mm -hmm. and passed away at the hospital there. We're not going to go take the take the body and move it to Anderson or Newberry, we'll just let Dr. Ward do the autopsy there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can get away with just tox. Um, if, you, if you suspect it's a drug overdose or something like that, you can just do tox on a person because an autopsy is not going to show you the amount of drugs in their system. You're going to have to wait and get the toxicology report Now, back. just out of curiosity, how much does an autopsy cost? Um, just, just roughly. Just $7.95. Um, Dr. Woodard and Anderson, he will do a partial autopsies for us, and that's like if, if we believe it was heart related or something like that, he will just do the chest area, just mm -hmm. open the chest and look at the heart. And if that's not, if he can't find anything there, he will do a complete autopsy. But Dr. Woodard does partial autopsies, and they're about half price. About half price. And that's, you know, the county. That, that comes out of the coroner's budget. No well, that's why I was going to ask, where does that actually come yes. from? It, it's, it's taxpayers' money. Okay. Now, if we don't see the need for an autopsy and a family really wants one, they can have a private autopsy done for their, done their self. Of course, they have to pay for it their self, you know. Um, I think the last one that I was talking to a family about, it was around $3,000, something like that. I don't know the whole details on those because I don't do them, very, you know, I don't, I'm not in the middle of those very often, okay. other than putting the family in touch with the pathologist. It has to be a tough decision, though, when you're looking at $800, roughly, to go ahead and spend the money to, to do something when you're trying to make that decision. Well, you know, I don't really see the money. I, I see finding an answer for somebody, and, and uh, you know, the money is very important, and, sure. and it comes out of the, the coroner budget, and the yeah. coroner has a, a very small budget, but, but you know, if, if it was your family member, you would want to know. Sure. And, and I'm, that family is the most important to me right then, or, or their loved one that's passed away, you know, they're, they're the most important, and I, whatever's going to be done is going to be done. SLED does our talks, so there's no charge for just toxicology, which goes back to if we can do talks only, we're going to do that. Absolutely. Do that. All right. Well, we are here with Marsha Kelly Clark. She is running for coroner now. Marsha, you worked. Uh, you've worked for the coroner's <coughs> office for twelve years. Now, what did you do before that? I owned my own business, and um, I had a cleaning service. I did residential homes, and back in the eighties, I worked as an one one dispatcher. Back and, in the dark ages, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all I ever wanted to do when I was when I was growing up. I wanted to be a 911 dispatcher, and, and Mr. Vaughn, Herbert Vaughn, mm -hmm. hired me when I I think I was like 19, 18, 19 years old, and I worked there for many years. But you know, I had children and swinging shifts. It just it just wouldn't work, so I had to leave. And then I had my own business, and I actually worked in a bank in between times too. And then then I wanted back in it. I wanted back in it, so I went back to the county. And then I, I went to work Big in the changes office. between when you first worked there to now, I guess. Oh, absolutely. It's, technology is amazing what they can do now. You know, you, you can click on an address and see the house that, you know, it's amazing. It amazing. is amazing. And even in a death scene, the, the technology is, in the 12 years that I've been doing it, it's things that, that you can do now that you couldn't do 10 years ago. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable, but but it brings so much closure and so much stress relief, I guess, to a family and, and to us too. You know, everyone in the office, we're there to help that family and do what we can for them. And you know, if we can give them a little bit of peace, that's what we're going to do. Seems like a depressing job, though, Marcia. It is. You know, I'm do you take some of it home sometimes? Well, yes. Every, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I mean, yeah. I, I you know. Um, this week, I've I've had to work two just tragic deaths, and and yesterday I was I was really down in the dumps about the one from the night before, and then I get the one last night, and you know you see these, and they're young people, and it's just it it, it brings it. 
I bring it home all the time. I do. My my kids will say, "Mom, you're crying again." And I'll say, "Well, you know, I just leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> Let me cry." <laughs> but I do, you know. But then then there's the rewarding side of it too when you can help a family. Yeah. And and they will call you and tell you how much they appreciate what you did, or or I get a thank you note in the in the mail. I mean. You know that that's that's the rewarding side of it, knowing that you help someone. Absolutely, but still, it's still got to be tough. It's still got to it be tough. tough. It is tough. Now, how many people actually work in the coroner's office now? Um, there's two others, not not counting the coroner. There's there's me, and then there's Steve Owens and Debbie Massey. Debbie works, stays in the office all day. She does handle calls one day a week or two days a week. We have two part-time guys that cover weekends only and two volunteers that cover weekends only. But on the weekend, if they get something and have a call and they need help, they call me to back them up. And Steve Owens will back up every other weekend. So it's so there's four the weekend guys and then three full-time in the office that actually respond to calls. You know, we're getting ready to go into a lot of graduations. A lot of people out there drinking and partying and hooping and hollering and being proud that they have made that graduation. This has to be a tough time of the year coming up because you know it's going to happen. I mean, Absolutely. you do. Yep. And I, for years, when um, probably up until four years ago, and I don't know why it's actually stopped, but every year at the end of school year or prom season, the high schools would have a program. They would do a mock rec. And, the fire department would be there, the EMS, the police officer, and the coroner's office. And I always, I've always participated in everyone at, at the high schools and at Lander. And you know, I have a, I have a serious problem with with teens losing their lives in in car accidents and infant deaths. So, and that's two things I'd like to focus on later. But you know, that that's got to come after our job with a death scene first. But. I, I love to, to go and speak to teens, and I actually made a, a notebook up of some of the things that I've responded to and some of the things that I've done and, and try to show them what happens. And not all, it's not always drinking. You know, kids are just so inexperienced drivers. and Well, there's texting and telephone absolutely. calls. I think the texting is the, is the next big thing it that's going to be really the real is. issue. Yeah. And, you know, if, if I can go and participate in these programs that they have and help a, help a teenager, mm -hmm. absolutely. I'll be the first one there, and then we have the infant deaths that is touches. It's new mothers. You know, if you've been a new mom, you know it wears you out. You know, if you don't have help there all the time, you're just tired and wore out. And we see so many infant deaths from unsafe and unsafe sleeping conditions. Moms will say, "Well, I'm just going to sit here on the couch and finish feeding." And mom dozes off, baby falls off, gets wedged. Um, baby in a crib with too many blankets or pillows or anything around and you know some infants will roll over you don't expect them to at two weeks but they will and an infant don't know to move when they're sure. face down so and, the, and to educate new moms with that or, or to educate the grandparents that sure. that mom needs help absolutely you know, those are two things that I really want to get into later but like I said the the death part of the coroner's office is is my main focus Absolutely. Well, we are right here. It is time for South Carolina News. We're going to hear South Carolina News, a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back. Hey, if you've got a question, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. That's right, we're right here at Sharp Facets Gallery, 11.37 in the evening, kind of rainy, cloudy weather out there, but we're here talking with Marsha Kelly-Clark. She works in the coroner's office. In fact, she is the first deputy. Is that right? She's de Chief yeah. deputy. I'll get it right here before the show's over. Chief deputy. And she wants to be the coroner because uh, the coroner is retiring. Corsi is retiring. So uh, 
you have uh, a lot of experience. You've been there for 12 years. Uh -huh. And you told me you are uh, enrolled in Piedmont Tech right now? I am. I, I started um, two semesters ago. I, I started back, went to Piedmont Tech, and, and I'm seeking a degree in criminal justice from there. And, and I'd like to continue my education, but I also take a lot of death investigation schools. Anything that becomes available that, I'm, that I, I can get to, I do. I'm taking a death investigation course online now just because I, I try to have two or three every year. To add you, let's see. Who, what was that TV show that they had that was the coroner's office? Quincy. Quincy. Maybe that was it. Yes. I love Quincy. <laughs> that I knew it. Yeah. See, I knew it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I was thinking uh, about that. All right. So uh, Quincy was your hero. Then, yeah. That time. Yeah. He was my hero back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, they don't have good shows like that anymore, do they? No. Everything now is so bombs and blowing up and. So reality based. Yeah, I like the old stuff. Old uh -huh. stuff, me too. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Marcia, you said, um, you know, I didn't realize this that every child death, child being anyone under 18, unless they're under a doctor's care for something, has to have an autopsy. Yes, if, unless they're terminally ill and under a doctor's care, we do an autopsy on 18 and under. Um, and the reason for that is? Well, it, it's. Uh, the law, the state law, but then it's reported as a child death to SLED, and they keep up with all the child deaths in the state and do, you know, statistics on how the how the children are dying, and that way they can um, do pre preventive methods to to try to stop a certain thing, you know, unsafe sleeping or riding bicycles without helmets or you know just the different. It's reported the different ways that a child dies. Absolutely. Um, you know, as far as children's deaths, have we seen increase or decrease, or is it stayed about the same in our in our county? I think it's it's, it's probably about the same. Every year we see two or three infant deaths, where you know babies, infants, and and one year we might have. Um, I can remember one year there was a car accident that had three te four teens at one time. And then I don't think, I think that was the only one we had that year of that. This year we've had um, one that I, well, he was actually over 18, but you know, 20, 21, 22, I still consider them. We just don't have to do the sled child re, child death report on somebody like that, but I consider them a child death because, you know, sure. a little bit older. <laughs> so, But I, I think it's about the same. It's stayed about the same. I, I don't think there's been a big increase or a big decrease in it. But we have had more violent deaths. Absolutely, there, we've we've seen a lot of that. I'd say in the last three, three years, yeah, um, guns, drugs. Um, Are we seeing more drug overdose cases? Um, it comes and goes. Um, I haven't. I I don't recall any this year. Actually, and of course, we're only into the fifth month, so we've got a way to go. But I think three, four. A year is what we see when it comes to drug overdose, and not all of them are are intentional. You know, most right. of our drug acts, most are most of them are accidental because someone will take something and then they'll forget they took it or take more or or mix in medication. So most of the drug overdoses that we see are an accidental death. Now, as far as if you were coroner. Um, working in the office for 12 years gives you a pretty good perspective about how things are run. What would you like to see change? I would like to see everyone in the office have more training and, and, and it's all, you know, we have to pay for these training things and, and that creates a problem and that could be one of the reasons that we don't get as much as we do now, but I'd like to see all everyone in there trained more and kept keep up with new technology and things that's going on and also become involved in our community get out and, and do things um, I've always went out and, and tried to do any kind of program I could do or or talk with anybody I could talk to church groups students whatever but I'd like to see everybody do it I would like to see everybody, everybody that works in the coroner's yes. office be yes. involved in community service Absolutely. I, I would like to see that and I, and I think once everybody got into it, they would really enjoy it, you know, it, it, because it, it, it makes you know that you've helped somebody. So. Sure. 
it, it does. And um, Cornerstone used to have the program, Tough Program. It was Teens Under Fire. And we did it once a month, the second Tuesday of the month, I believe it is. And, and I would actually take the kids to the morgue. And a year later, I, had, I was at the Civic Center, and this little boy walked up to me, and he said, you know, I used to drink on the weekends, but after you took me in that morgue, I don't drink anymore. And I thought, way to go. <laughs> if, if, That's like one of those scared straight programs, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and I show them the needles, what what I'm going to do with the needles if they're laying in there on that table. And, and it, it's it's not a pretty It's eye-opening. It yeah. is. It really is. Do you yeah. think, though, uh, with TV and everything, that we've been a little desensitized to some of the things yeah. And well, I think two things. One, I think that uh, I was just at the Arlington Cemetery up in, uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. And one of the things that, um, you know, you can see it on TV a gazillion times. It doesn't make the impression as it does when you're standing there seeing oh. rows and rows of uh, headstones lined up for looks like miles. Right. And I wonder if going in the morgue is having is different than being able to see it on TV. Yes, because you know the, the TV programs they're in these big cities with these multi-million-dollar offices and girls in high heels and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I do wear high heels sometimes, but but that's not Greenwood. You know, we can't. Do Where is the morgue? In the south. In, in the south, south. At the hospital. At the, okay. In the bottom. Um, you know, on the TV shows you can. You can run a tox report in 10 minutes. Well, that's what we expect, CSI, right? right? But that doesn't happen. That it doesn't, doesn't happen? happen? No. Sometimes it's a couple of months before we actually get that back. You know, yeah, it, you watch TV shows and they're just blown way out of proportion when it comes to the coroner's office, actually. Um, there is some on the, the forensic shows that come on, like, right. now I watch them a lot just to see what they do. But those are more realistic. That's where Marcia gets all her experience, folks, watching yeah. those shows. <laughs> you really can pick up some ideas sometimes and, and think, oh gosh, I just did something like that, but I could do it like that. You know, try it like that. But, sure. You know, you get stuck in your ways of doing things, too, and it's kind of hard. To, what, that's with anything, though. To, sure. It's hard to do something different. So, so you think, um, as far as the coroner's office, as far as things that you'd like to see, you'd like to see more of all the people involved in community service, you um, and training. What about training? Um, the law enforcement um, coroner association puts on a lot of classes. They have um, they have a, a big coroner school every year. Um, I'd like to see. We take turns going down there. Everybody gets their chance to go there. And any classes that anything around in the surrounding areas, and a lot of law enforcement agencies and other coroner's office puts on programs and for people to come, and, and it may be that we can start doing that. That's just something that, that we'll have to work on, that, that, I, that I'd like to work on, that we can do the programs for Anything people. else? Do you think you have the, enough technology and whatever? Or do we need to spend money in the coroner's office, or is the coroner's office okay with what they have to work with? Well, we could always use stuff, but, well, you know. Do you need it, though? I mean, that, well, I guess, no, comes I mean, down to the question, right, do you I need mean, it? We, can, we, we do fine with what we have. You know, there's... Sure, there's there's different ways of you know more expensive ways of doing things, but the inexpensive ways work too. They work also, and and if that's what it takes to get it done, and that's all we can afford to pay for, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it that way. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with a little hard work. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, we are here with Marsha Kelly Clark. She is running for coroner. She is not in the primary coming up. She'll actually be part of the uh, November election. So uh, why don't you stay right here? We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. We are talking with Marsha Kelly Clark. She wants to be the next coroner. She actually, I guess you could say, is first in line. I would like to think that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, she's looking for your vote here. And, of course, she actually won't be on the ballot till the November election. We do have a primary coming up June 12th. She is not because she is filed as a Democrat. Uh, so, uh, Marsha, we don't have a lot of time left, but you were telling me about uh, the death certificates, how they're filed now, and the Social Security numbers, how they're getting those Social Security numbers out of the system. 
Yes, DHEC started, it's probably been a couple of years, they, we started doing death certificates online. Um, funeral homes and doctor's offices can, I think they have to pay a certain fee to get the program, and a death certificate is just sent from one office to another, and a, the social security number has to match with the name when it's entered in there, or it will not let whoever's putting that information, usually a funeral home, it won't let it go in. So it actually takes the uh, person's social security number out of the system once they pass away, which is good because if somebody wants to steal your number and fraud and buy everything in your name. And then we and also then of keep course up. there's those cases where they've they've gotten the wrong number and the person is still living. Yeah, well, not here in Greenwood, right. but you know, every happened. every, every once in a while. Yeah. But and the web death um, program it, it's really that's what. If you don't have that right number in there that matches that name, it's not going to accept it. And then we keep up with that for the voter registration office, too. We send them a list every month of deceased people over the age of 18 that's eligible to vote. We pull their Social Security numbers or pull them off the, the list down there, I guess, to be on a jury or whatever. Sure. So, but it, it's a really good program, and um, there's still some kinks in it. You know, there's, there's still a few things. Every now and then I'll run into a problem with it. And, but I think eventually everybody's going to be that way. I don't think you'll even have a paper death certificate anymore. Oh, for shame. It is. But I like it. I mean, it's just, it, it takes a lot of time, not time, I mean, it, it, it takes, oh, you don't have to run around trying to track somebody down or make sure someone's in the office because, well, our office is staffed now, 8.30 to 5, but a few years ago it wasn't. And if I was up all night, I wasn't going to be in the office all day. And if somebody needed to bring a death certificate, they'd have to track me down. or mm -hmm. And I would have to go meet them somewhere or something like that. So it's really a good program. It really is. I, I like it. Now, you spoke in the beginning of the show about the compassion part of this job. Why don't you expand a little bit more on that? That's just, that's what brings me to it every day. You know, you would ask me about, do I take it home with me? And I do. I, it, it's It's hard. But... But then everybody, everybody I meet just has a special place in my heart and I, and I get so attached to so many families and I've kept up with families from years ago and I still keep up with them today. I just, they become a part of our family, I guess you'd say, and, and I'm going to do anything possible, anything possible to help someone understand why they've lost someone. You know, if it's an unexpected death, and no one knows, we're going to find out. We're, I'm going to work till just, there's just absolutely no other way. And it's very rare that we have a death that's considered undetermined as a matter. We, we, usually we can figure out exactly what it is. But I'm, I cry a lot. <laughs> you cry a lot? I cry a lot. I, I'm, I'm very tender hearted and you know, when, when I go to a family and they're crying, I'm usually crying right there with them. But you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to stay there with them until they ready for me to go and some people want to tell me everything that's their deceased or their their loved one tell me how funny they were or tell me stories about them and, and I'll sit there and listen I feel like I know that person or did know that person. Sounds more like a grief counselor. <laughs> I guess in a way you could say that I guess I guess you could but you know if that's what they want to do if they want to sit there for two hours telling me funny stories I'll listen if they want to sit there and cry and hold my hand for two hours that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Anything I can do to help. But everybody that dies that's not under a doctor's care. Now explain this to me that a coroner's death certificate has to be brought in. What was what was it you were telling me as far as the coroner? You have to get a de death certificate. You have to be called unless it's under a doctor's care. Any Well, any death outside a medical facility. Um, we respond to. Inside a medical facility, like if it's at the hospital, if it's a, a suspicious death or a homicide or an accident or something like that, we, we respond to those too. But if it's just someone that's brought in from, the, from home in cardiac arrest and there's nothing suspicious about it, we wouldn't respond to a death like that. Um, nursing homes, they usually have a doctor on staff okay. so we don't respond. Well, I was just trying to get an idea how busy that office is. We stay pretty busy. Uh, three, four hundred natural deaths, and then we, we list each. There's five different manners of death, and, and we keep up with, with 
the number for, of, of each one. Um, I know I was looking the other day, between 2003 and 2010, there were like 1,600, a little over 1,600 deaths that we responded to, and I worked almost seven, well, 748 of them personally. Wow. So Almost half. Almost half. And I, every year, it's been like that every year. Um, I just, I, and then when I did all the office work too, see I was, if I didn't go out and personally work the death, I still took part in it or still had a role in it. And I, I keep up with everything that, that the office girl does now. So I'm still involved in every death that occurs in Greenwood County. Now, as far as um, you, you were telling me that um, in other states they would have to be a doctor, but in South Carolina you don't have to be a medical doctor to do this job. Right. Some states require the coroner to be a, a medical doctor. Um, I'm not sure if they have to be a pathologist. They could be just, I don't know if they just have to be a regular medical doctor or general practitioner. But in South Carolina, you do not have to have a medical degree. When you first started, was it hard to be up to snuff on uh, all the all the technical terms and everything? Mm, no, most of them are, are pretty easy to figure out what's going on. And, and You didn't have to sit there with a medical dictionary? I do have a medical dictionary, and I've, You've you know, used I've learned a few words <laughs> over the years, and mainly how to spell them over the years. You know, that's the that's tricky part. But, um, you know, a lot of it just comes is common sense, and it, and it comes natural to you. But, but I enjoyed it so much, and I, 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 I love what I do. So it, it came easy to me. It 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 does. It, it comes easy to me. Well, we only have a couple of minutes left here, Marsha Kelly Clark, and I want to let you tell the people why you should be the coroner for Greenwood, South Carolina. Well, I have been there for twelve years, and I have been to many different types of calls. I've worked on many different types. I, I get educated any way possible. I love what I do and I'm, the experience, you know, you can't, I can't read a book or, or go to a class and get the experience and the knowledge that I have going to calls, going to scenes and, and first-hand knowledge, hands-on. That has brought me higher up, I guess, you know, to where I am, and it, and I believe I'm good at my job I, because, I, because I care so much about it. I believe it makes me better at it, and I'm here to work for the community, for the people, and do what I can to help anyone. Absolutely. And I would love to be the next coroner. I've wanted it for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are right here at Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. We've been talking with Marsha Kelly Clark. She is uh, works in the coroner's office. She wants to be the next coroner. She is running, as I said, as a Democrat, so she does not have any uh, opposition on the June 12th primary. So she will be on the ballot November November 6th. Yes, November 6th. Are you looking forward to that date? Oh, I think I am, but then I'm kind of nervous about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> as I said, I'm not, you know, this politics is new to me, and, and I don't think the office should be involved in it, but, you know, it, it's it's going to happen one way or another. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Now, if people have questions, do you have a website or a telephone number where they can call you? I do. My phone number is 323-2943, and my website is Marsha Kelly Clark for Coroner. Dot com. Dot com. Well, and I'm also on Facebook. You're on Facebook. Well, there you go. You're connected all the way around. <laughs> all right. Well, Marcia, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate it, and I've, I've enjoyed talking with you. Absolutely. Well, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. We're done for today. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 o'clock, so don't you go away. Keep it right here. We still have a few satellite issues, but hopefully by tomorrow evening they will be fixed. I'm meeting this guy late tomorrow night to get these satellite issues fixed, so you just stay tuned and rock with us. We'll have it fixed. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.